Hello everyone, I'm Jelana and this is the TechFlex. Today we're going to be talking about how to become a software engineer at a top tech company. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated a couple years ago. I was an interdisciplinary studies major concentrating in math, marketing, and computer science. Honestly, when I graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do after graduation. Um, so I became a data analyst for a couple years and eventually I decided that I wanted to be a software engineer. I'm not gonna get into why I became a software engineer. Um, we can save that for another video. But the problem was I didn't have any experience, like literally nothing. Um, so basically I was starting from scratch. So this video is basically taking you through all the steps that I took to teach myself how to code, learn fundamentals. I did so many interviews at so many tech companies. I just want to share some of the tips and tricks that I learned along the way, and I ended up accepting my job offer at LinkedIn. And hopefully you guys are able to land your dream job as well. With that being said, let's get into it. But first, let's get into this outfit. It was too cute for me to not show it off. The blazer is from Misguided and the bag is from Jacquemus. Totally not office appropriate, but I could put on a turtleneck or some mules to make it, you know, office chic. But anyway, girl, let's get back into this video. So step one is definitely to do your research. There are so many videos on YouTube about what it's like being a software engineer, why I chose to become a software engineer, why I don't like software engineering. You definitely want to look into it to make sure that it's really something that you're interested in. I personally chose the self-taught route because I am not paying for a master's and I am not paying for a boot camp. Boot camps can cost anywhere between $8,000 and $12,000 and obviously master's programs are even more expensive. And I personally, I'm just not doing neither. And I also just couldn't imagine myself going back to school. So I really just wanted to find a way to do it in the most affordable way and also self-paced because when you teach yourself, you can just go as slow or as fast as you want. So step two is definitely to network. Um, if you're anything like me, 99.9% .9 of my friends are not software engineers. I just simply wanted more people in my network that could relate to the kinds of things that I'm learning and can relate to my job search and the way that we do interviews and things like that. So I networked my butt off to make some software engineer friends. So I tried to attend as many coding events as possible. Before COVID, I was going to like one to two per week. Um, and that was just a great way for me to meet people. I would go to pack nights, code and chill, and all types of stuff. Um, a lot of those events I was able to find on the Meetup app, so that's a great way to find coding events in your city and meet people nearby. It's also a great way to meet a lot of bootcamp students. So I lived in Chicago at the time and I met so many bootcamp students who were also learning how to code and also going through the job search at the same time. So it was really cool making friends that were in the same phase in life, kind of job searching and just trying to figure it out. Step three is to pick a language to learn and build a project. There are a lot of different languages and a lot of them are really good for different things. This is kind of where the research comes into play, where you really want to know what kind of software engineer you want to be, whether that's front end or back end or full stack. That way you know what language you should probably be looking into. Um, this same language would be the, the language that you build your project in and also do your coding interviews in. So I would definitely choose wisely. Some of the top languages are JavaScript, Java, and Python. So like I said, do your research and figure out which one is best for you. As far as building a project, there are so many different platforms that you can learn on. There's YouTube, there's Coursera, there's edX, there's Udemy. There's so many different um, platforms that have nice educational videos. I personally decided to do Udemy because um, the courses were very cheap. I probably spent about $13 and I got about maybe like 30 hours of footage. Um, so I was able to learn JavaScript and build about four projects all within the same $13 class. So that was pretty cool. I'll be sure to link that class down below. I picked JavaScript as my language, so this class is in JavaScript. If you are using JavaScript, this would be a great class for you to use 
to learn JavaScript and build a few projects for your portfolio. Speaking of portfolios, this part is really important because these projects are actually what's going to be on your resume as well. So these projects that I completed came up in my interviews all the time and people love to hear about the things that I built on my own and how I taught myself how to code. I kind of like use that as like a slight flex like in interviews I love to tell people that I taught myself how to code because I feel like it just shows that I'm capable of learning things on the fly so I always want to brag on that <laughs> so step four is data structures and algorithms and this is the most important step when you're interviewing for top tech companies, 95% of your interviews will be on your data structure and algorithm competency. So important to really take your time and master these fundamentals. Examples of common data structures that you will be interviewed on are arrays, linked lists, trees, graphs, and more. Common algorithms that you need to know are searching algorithms, sorting algorithms, things like knapsack problems, and memoization. You also want to understand time complexity and basically that is how efficient your algorithm is and you will be asked in interviews about the time and space complexity. In the future, I will definitely have a video on all of the most common data structures and algorithms that you need to know while interviewing for top tech companies. Just an FYI, the difference between interviewing for top tech companies and traditional companies mostly is that a lot of the top tech companies that you hear like Fang Moolah, and if you don't know what that is, that's Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Uber, Lyft, and Airbnb. Those companies tend to only really test you on data structures and algorithms. Um, whereas traditional companies, from what I've seen, it's a little bit more like unpredictable. Um, a lot of it, I've been tested on things like API implementation and just very specific like UI questions or backend questions. Whereas at tech companies, it's kind of more like consistent, I will say. It's not easier, but it's consistent. So at least you know what exactly, um, for the most part, what you're getting yourself into and it's easily practicable. To learn data structures and algorithms, you pretty much do the same thing as a step before and you can find an online course somewhere like YouTube or Udemy. Again, I use Udemy for this as well. Um, so I'll link my data structures and algorithms course. I just want to emphasize that you should definitely take your time with learning these algorithms and data structures because it is very difficult when you are seeing it for the first time, especially if you don't have a live instructor. So give yourself some grace and take the time and it will be okay. Next step is to definitely practice. Practice, practice, practice. Like I cannot stress this enough. You need to spend at least a couple of months strictly practicing interview questions because they are that hard. I personally would recommend using lead code because a lot of companies pull their interview questions straight from lead code. And um, you can even search the company that you're about to interview for and practice questions that are commonly brought up. Um, I love lead code because after I solve a problem, I'm able to look at the discussions and see how other people have solved the problem as well. And it just kind of like keeps me on my P's and Q's to make sure that I'm always using an efficient solution. I know I said that every step is the hardest, but no, this step is definitely the hardest <laughs> because the questions are so hard on lead code. Like who even comes up with this stuff and why? You don't even use these things in the real world at all. So why am I freaking reversing a linked list. When will I do that at work? Ever? Never. I won't. So why am I being tested on it? But you did this for what? Why not? <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> why though? Lead code problems are just very difficult and if you're looking at them for the first time, it can be a little bit discouraging. Um, but like I said, just keep practicing and you'll be fine. Take your time. Definitely start off with the easy problems and then make, work your way up to the medium problems. Um, I really didn't do any hard problems because that's just doing too much. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. But um, most of your interviews will be lead code hard, I mean lead code medium. I would definitely recommend doing this step along with the last step. So each time you learn a data structure, I would probably flip to lead code and just do a couple practice problems for that data structure. And always make sure that every day you are refreshing your memory and practicing old data structures and just random easy problems. This part honestly just made me feel very incompetent. 
because the questions are so hard. Like I was struggling at first with the easy questions, but over time you will get better. First, you'll start with the easy problems and those become actually easy to you and then you'll work your way to the medium problem. Once you can do medium problems pretty smoothly, I would say that you're finally interview ready. Step six is mock interviewing. You do not want your first technical interview ever to be a real interview. Please don't do it. I did it. I felt so, so, so dumb. Like I felt so dumb. And I felt like that was the worst day of my life. It was actually a company that at the time I really wanted to work for. And that week I bombed two interviews, not one, but two interviews. And I just felt like complete crap. To this day, I'm salty about it. <laughs> because I bombed the heck out of that interview. It was such a horrible experience. It was so awkward. And I just wouldn't wish that on nobody. So definitely do some mock interviews. After I learned that lesson, I did a lot of mock interviews with some of the people that I met during my networking phase. Um, I actually had a couple of friends that we would meet twice a week and we would just kind of mock interview each other and solve lead code problems together. It was so cute and so nerdy, but that is what made my interviewing experience much smoother. Another great tip is using interviewing.io. So I actually didn't get to use this, but I have friends that do. Um, I'll put the link in the comments, but basically it allows you to connect with other software engineers and you can even request to have software engineers that work at top tech companies like the Fang Moolah that I told you about. But they basically mock interview you and it gives you a great opportunity to get that real world experience. Step seven, which is the last step, thank you Lord. <laughs> Dust off that resume, fix up that LinkedIn and apply. Some of you are hiring for software engineers right now. It's a very hot market and there are a lot of opportunities out there. So don't worry about getting a job interview because that part is probably going to be the easiest part. <laughs> I definitely use LinkedIn to apply. I don't use any other websites um, and that's not biased. I just really like how if you have LinkedIn premium, you're able to see how you stand amongst other candidates. And I also love sliding in recruiters DMs just to see if they have any opportunities available. If you set your profile to open to work, you'll have a lot of recruiters reach out to you, especially if you put a lot of the buzzwords on your LinkedIn, such as software engineer or looking for software engineering opportunities. And things like that. Honestly, a lot of the interviews that I got, I didn't even apply for. Um, and I had companies, really big name companies, like messaging me all the time. So it's actually a really great platform um, if you're job searching. Anyway, guys, this is my first video and I hope that you enjoyed. Be on the lookout for more videos. I won't just be talking about software engineering. If you like what you saw in this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.